Hello everybody at home, hello uh, all of our children and our parents and our wider community uh, here at the Priory Catholic Academy. Uh, this is our third collective act of worship um, and uh, again it follows uh, the stories set out about Jesus' life in Mark's Gospel, which is actually the shortest Gospel of the four Gospel writers. And remember this is just a tiny little book in this big Bible just here that we spoke about last week. So, I'm going to invite you now to uh, join me in making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So last week we spoke about um, this statement, which was, I know what human dignity is. I show love, respect, and kindness to others. And I asked you last week to think about how you could do that at home, um, in your families, uh, so that you could really help each other with your emotional and mental health and your happiness, so you really could feel uh, good about yourself. So I'm hoping that uh, you were able to live that mission statement out wherever you were last week and with whatever you did. Uh, this week's uh, statement to live by is, I understand the humility and kindness we show to vulnerable people. Because in our Gospel story, uh, which I'm going to go to now in, in, this story, in this book here from Mark, it then says that Jesus, because last week, remember, he was in the synagogue and there was, that, uh, there was that man there that was suffering from mental health and emotional difficulties. But he left the synagogue and he went with, uh, with James and John. And they went, first of all, to the house of uh, Simon and Andrew. Because Simon's mother-in-law, he was told, had gone to bed with a fever. Now, a fever is like the flu. Um, and flu can actually end uh, in, uh, unfortunately, in people dying. And so, a bit like COVID-19. Because with COVID-19, you get a fever as well. So people have always suffered these diseases. But Jesus went to her while she was in bed. And he just took her by the hand. Um, and he helped her up. And at that moment, she felt much better about herself that she started to get so much better that she went downstairs and then we know that she's she made them probably a cup of tea or something that they would normally drink um, so they could all have a, a sit down and a, and a cup of tea together so he cured her and then that evening and we're told it was after sunset um, they started to bring Jesus lots of people who were sick in so many different ways some people with fever, and some people with illnesses, and some people were also suffering, like the man last week, with emotional difficulties, because people had obviously heard that Jesus could also cure anybody. Um, and the whole town, it says, came crowding around the door, um, trying to bring uh, their loved ones, the people that they wanted to have cured. And he cured many people, it says, from their diseases. Um, but... He would not allow um, them to speak because they knew who he was. He kept telling the disciples, please don't keep spreading the message about what I'm doing here. Um, uh, sort of let's keep it a secret. And that's something that goes right through Mark's Gospel. He tells them not, not to tell everybody who he is because we know that he's the Son of God, don't we? Then the next day, um, so in, in the morning, it was long before dawn, um, he got up and he left the house. And he went off to find a lonely place because he was exhausted. He was tired from all the hard work he was doing. Um, and Simon and uh, the other disciples went to try and find him and said, Master, what are you doing? Everyone's looking for you. And he answered, look, we just need to go elsewhere now. Let's go to the neighbouring country towns and those other villagers and let's go and preach the gospel. Let's go and preach um, um, the good news. And so he did. He went into lots of other towns, into their synagogues, and began to preach. And he also uh, carried on curing people, um, because that's what Jesus did. He, he came to show the power of God, and that he really was the Son of God. Um, so through Jesus' example, that's why we understand to show humility and kindness okay, to vulnerable people. People are vulnerable in so many, many different ways. They're vulnerable because um, they might be old and so old and frail that they can't look after themselves anymore. That's a vulnerability. They might have a disease like cancer 
or heart or lung disease and go to hospital for all different types of illnesses. Um, they might just be poor people. Poor people who haven't got a house to live in, haven't got enough food. They're vulnerable. Um, we have to ask ourselves, if we're, disciples, if we're disciples of Jesus, what would Jesus do? And in every case, he would try to help them and cure them. And you know, that's just exactly what our NHS staff are doing at the moment. They're working so, so hard on the COVID patients. Okay, so they're really trying to cure them eventually, because that's what doctors and nurses do. And they're spending a lot, a lot of hard work, many, many hours, 12-hour shifts on and off. So they get to a point where they're exhausted, just like Jesus was in our story. He was exhausted, so he had to leave the town um, and go to other towns. And he needed time to be alone and rest. And so um, I'm going to pray now, and I want you to think about the words that I say. And if you agree with the words, you can say amen at the end of my prayer. Lord, we pray that you send your spirit to re-energise our NHS staff, our key workers, those people that work in care homes, people who care on the front line for our vulnerable and sick people of our community. We pray that when they feel exhausted and low on energy, that the Holy Spirit can galvanise them to have renewed energy to continue the fantastic and necessary work that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. So what I would like you to do this coming week is I would like you to show your support for vulnerable people. We do that so well in our school um, because we set up charities and we will start to think about the next charities over the coming weeks. Okay, so and when we do that, I want you to think about how you can really start to think about how we can help vulnerable people through the money we raise. And we still have our food collections and we still have the tins of food that are brought to school. So even if you're not coming to school at the moment um, and you are out shopping, if there's a way you can get any food into school, any spare tins, anything like that, then do try and get them here because we still take them to Eastwood Food Bank. Or if you could just go to Eastwood Food Bank and take some food, uh, without having to come into school, then that would show that you're really looking out for vulnerable people, homeless people, and people who haven't got enough money to feed themselves. So that's that's this week's uh, task, is show that you understand how you can show that humility, that humanness. Show how you can be kind to vulnerable people. Thank you uh, for listening to our collective worship. I'm going to finish now by making the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take care, and we will be back to school soon, not too many weeks now, so I'm told, um, and God bless. Bye now.